Okay, good. You guys can see me at least. All right. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm going to do a, just a mic check right now. Two things. If you could just fill the chat with this. Um, one is, do you hear the music that's playing? And is it choppy? If it's choppy, I'm shutting it off. And do you hear my voice clearly? Yep, to both. I hope that's both. How about throw something in the comments for me, like leave the music on or shut the music off. If you can't hear me clearly over the music, it's got to go off. Okay, good. Then I'm just going to chill. I don't know if YouTube's going to have problems with me playing copyrighted music in a live stream. Uh, we'll see. Okay, good. Thank you all. Uh, for some reason, it's not giving me a preview. Oh, there it is. All right, good. Okay. I got my bearings. Thelma can't hear the music so well. That's all right. Thelma, I'm sorry you had to set up a Google account just to participate in the live streams. Um, I appreciate that. That makes it easy. Okay, good. That music will help me speak loudly and clearly, and it will help me not to feel like I'm totally, uh, I don't know, alone by myself in my basement. Feels more like class this way to me, I guess. I don't know. Okay. And you can always, Thelma, and anybody as well, you can always join the live stream the, not the live stream, the Zoom session. So after this at 1130, I'm going to have like a 30 minute ish Zoom session. Uh, it's just an open session. So anyone from any class can hop in um, to that Zoom meeting. And if you have questions or anything like that, you can sort of bring them up there as well. So we'll see how that works. That's kind of the idea at least. All right. I'm going to get started then. So I'm just going to, here's how this is going to go. Um, I'm going to draw this image. And if you go to Canvas, in fact, let me see. Let me see if this works. Oh, this might throw me into a weird loop. I'm going to try it anyway. Check canvas, that image is inside. Ads. All right. Cool. So first things, um, I'm gonna try and keep my eye on the chat over here and I think, let me see if I can do a pop out chat real quick. Oh. Excellent. This will make it easier. All right. So there's difficulty for me in this in that it's hard for me to talk, draw, answer questions, and keep my eye on the live chat all at once. So something's going to suffer always. My talking is going to go weird. Uh, my drawing is going to go weird or one of those two things is usually what suffers. So bear with me. Um, 
first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, pastel container. So I have this thing. It's I got this. I think I got this from Home Depot, and then I got like some crafting foam from Hobby Lobby or Joanne's Fabrics, something like that. Um, so I can just I can pop this open. And you can do this if you want. If you're tired of like the container leading you astray this is my 12 color set so so today i'm just going to use the 12 colors that are in the set and then maybe uh on uh, next week i'll probably start using more colors than this just because it's funner and nicer but um oh yeah joe it's true i think home depot is still open joanne's fabric though probably certainly closed i think you could probably get some egg crate foam or something from Home Depot, some soft foam. I think you still might be able to put it together from Home Depot. Um, but anyway, just so you're, if you're wondering how I take sort of deal with my pastels, I do it like this. The nice thing about this is when you, when I close it, it compresses them between the foam. So now if I, I can shake this, I mean, it's pretty rugged. I can, my pastels aren't gonna break or anything because they're kind of sandwiched in between that foam. It, it kind of, I don't know, it's a better solution to me than the little boxes they come in. Normally I would just bring that up in class as like an, an aside. I think one semester I had people go make them, but you decide. Especially as you grow out of the pastels that you've got. Oh yeah, you can get stuff online too, that's a good idea. Throw it. I'm afraid of breaking something else in my... You guys can see this drawing bench. Maybe I'll, here, I'm going to show you this real quick. Yeah, a little, little cushion. I built that last weekend when it was obvious that we were going to have to be teaching from home. So I just made myself a drawing horse with a cushion so I could sit in it for hours a day. It's pretty easy and cheap to build too. So if you ever wanted to make your own or something, I could show you. The plans or whatever. I will not be throwing it, but I could. All right. Oh man, I did yesterday's stream with the beginning folks with in dead silence, and it was rough. Oh, I forgot to start up my captions. Hold on, let me let me know if you see captions coming along the top edge now. Now they should start showing up. Okay, Alexis, I'll, I'll post the, I can post the plans and sort of the DIY as well. Uh, it's like two by fours and stuff like that. So, okay. If you have access to tools and you're comfortable using them yourself, you could make your own. Or if you know somebody that is kind and willing to go into the wood shop for you uh they could make a pretty uh, snazzy version i just made it out of scrap wood that was in my garage all right you guys are like when are you going to get started i'm going to get started now all right as i said i'm going to keep my eye on the chat uh i'm going to start drawing here though let me pull up yeah the larger image and I'm going to try and talk as I go, but as I said, if my sentences stop making sense, uh, forgive me. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is take stock of this thing. And it looks to me like, so I'm, I'm going to sort of plan like what colors am I going to be dealing with? The first thing I notice is that the model has a lot of like white, yellow, orange, and I can see some greens, and in the sh shadows, I can see some lavender and stuff. The background is really kind of a gray, cool thing. So, I've, and I've got my gray paper here, so I, I'm kind of like, I'm off to a good start just from the surface that I'm working on, so that's good. Um, I am gonna start with something that's uh, 
in, kind of intense color wise. I know I'm going to be using a lot of orange in this drawing. I know it's going to be easier to chill the orange out versus try to like bring orange back into the model, though I can do that too. I also know that my orange stick doesn't like to make strong marks. So I think I'm going to start my gesture with this sort of, not the magenta, not the red stick that I normally talk about using. This one, I think I'm going to start with this one instead. And we'll see how it goes. All right, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this, just making sure. Yeah, I think most people's orange stick is like that. They do, it doesn't it doesn't like to make marks, but on bare paper, it makes a better mark. It just doesn't layer so well. It's like a harder formulation or something. So this is that stick head here. I'm just going to try and This is kind of like an envelope start. If I abstract that body, it's like a it's like a bean. Head here, chest there. There's an S that goes up through that through the ribs where the latissimus dorsi is. I'm gonna try and throw that into the drawing just to give myself some something to go on. So I'm already gonna go off the page, I can tell. <clears throat> Tatiana's wondering, so to start the image off, you can start with like a charcoal pencil for the gesture part and go over it with pastel. Yeah, you can. Um, I wouldn't go too heavy with the charcoal pencil because that'll get uh, pretty, I don't know, it'll get pretty grungy or it can get pretty grungy. So uh, I, I'm just going to stick with uh, this sort of light pastel because I know it's kind of, uh, it's going to stay alive longer. Yeah, sorry, my, pap my paper's horizontal. I don't know if you can see so well. Um, I would be aware of vine charcoal, to be honest. Uh, if you use vine charcoal, it's the smeariest of the bunch. So it has vine charcoal has a has a potential to make a a bigger mess. All right, so I'm getting this is getting big. Like I'm telling already within this first little bit that this is going to be large on the page and I could, I need to stop and ask myself, uh, is that what I want? Am I okay with cropping them off at the legs here, cropping off that side? Um, I think for the sake of working on this one, I think I'm going to just go ahead with it. I'm going to let it crop. If I wanted to fit the whole thing on, now is the time to sort of re-establish or re-figure out where things are going to be. Um, for this, I, I think I'm okay with it. I think I'm okay with it. We'll see if I if I eat my words later. All right, now I'm going to go in. This is kind of, uh, yeah, actually, I think I'm going to hold on the like shadow gesturing. I'll probably swipe those in later. Right now, I'm going to get some more structure in this drawing. Uh, I'm going to do some measuring and some line work. And it looks like I've kind of like maxed this orange out. So I think I'm going to move to the magenta just so I can see what I'm up to. Everything is still subject to change. All right, and I think I'm going to start like in this root area, like the hips area. I 
can't help myself but to do those swipes. So there we go. Just trying to get some of this structure in. And I know I'm gonna I'm not gonna really go bonkers down in this leg, so I'm just gonna kinda let it drop off right there. I wanna focus my detail attention up here. Alright, this if I drop straight down from that shadow. There's a nice little curl right there in the knee pit. Is that straight? It's kind of straight across like that. This is a thinner sliver, I think. So this comes up like that. You can almost see that sort of like where the head of the femur, the trochanter of the femur would be through here. That hip bone. Jug this out. Angle out like that and straight down. Little transition. Back of the leg. All right, if I swing this up in like that, I'm looking at the angle between like where this stomach crosses like where it is in relation to this like if I just went straight through it's about there there's like a shadow mass right through here I'm gonna get that the S shape is a little further up no so I'm kind of like I'm building this almost monochromatically to start with so I'm, I'm kind of like I'm getting my bearings in this magenta fashion and this is just how I want to start this one i feel like it's going to give me a better uh, foundation to draw on top of um, i could start swiping color in right away as well like swiping light shapes and dark shapes and and that kind of thing but i'm kind of this is that hybrid sort of uh shadow swipe from looking at the shadows that uh, from the shadow gesturing we were doing and line work so at this point your gestures can kind of or your drawings can kind of take on this nature a loose gesture that may include some shadow stuff, um, followed by a, a more linear buildup that's that nevertheless has the shadow information in it. There's a really strong shadow there, and I'm just going to look here. It points to the top of that, so it might be a little higher up. And then there's a bunch of face stuff here. I'm not going to mess with that because it's in this image. It's in the it's so far in the background. Top of that shoulder bump, and this is all subject to revision as well. I'm going to be revising this as I go. I really want to get that elbow in at least a little bit. Looks like I'm just big enough to do it. All right, so now I'm going to start working. So now the orange is actually, in this situation, it's kind of like it's behaving similarly, I guess, to the orange of the body. And I'm going to, I'm going to come back to my effect. Let me, that's all shadow. I'm going to throw that behind. And I'm going to come back to this sort of root and use that as my basis from 
for uh, building up. This is where I might start thinking about blue, but I'm gonna see how things behave first. Um, I'm gonna start using some white, but I need to be careful because on this, with as little as I've done so far, the white is gonna be pretty strong. And so I'm just gonna sort of just graze the areas that look like it have has white, or that white might be appropriate. Hold on, I'm just gonna change one structural thing real quick. This should be tighter. All right, so this looks like there's some white there and back here. And it's going magenta because of how much magenta I have on here. So I'm almost certainly gonna bring some blue green back into this, but the gray is kind of flecking through, kind of saving me from it being too aggressive. Uh, straight over from the hips, if that rides up. Straight over, it's a little bit up, but I think it'll be all right. Just kind of this pass in the armpit there. I'm gonna clean some of that magenta off of this. I'm being real, really careful not to put this anywhere that there's going to be, that it's shadow. I'm, in fact, I'm only, I'm prioritizing those lightest spots right now. Almost like a light shape drawing at this point. Man, there are some crazy, the ribs interacting with the muscles is really interesting in this spot. I like it. All right, I'm going to hold on that. I'm going to grab some of this yellow and sort of give myself some warmth in the spots that look like they have the most of that sort of thing happening. Definitely through the back there, definitely through the elbow here. Maybe even down in the knee, but that knee, to me, it just seems to be a little more, a little less yellow, a little more orange, magenta, almost. Right, and overall, I'm st I can already see things drifting right now towards being, um, it's really orange. Everything is really quite orange. Uh, the gray is helping to chill that out a little bit, but I'm I'm certainly going to need some some help in that aspect. So I think what I'm gonna do is come through with some cooler values. This is that, this is not my dark blue stick, it's like my middle blue stick. And I'm not gonna throw this just sort of everywhere. I'm only gonna put it in the places that seem cool and there's like a, there's a stripe through here that seems kind of cool. also use it to build some shadows, but I'll probably layer some more in here as well. Hey, Pandora listeners, this is Eric Hilton of Caesar Corporation. I wanted to invite you to pre-order our new album, Symphonic which we recorded with the Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. We're offering some special bundles while supplies last. Click below to check it out. darken up some of these shadows here so just that I'm still things are still pretty gestural they're not I'm not going for detail yet I'm still kind of mapping out that's gonna get some work later he's kind of a rainbow guy right now but we'll uh, we will work on that 
the reason that happens so it looks like a rainbow trout or something is that i've just i don't have enough color interaction yet i've got like orange and red and blue and white and they're all quite separate so it's like when you're when i'm balancing i'm kind of like it's a heavy-handed way of balancing right now What I might do is, so I filled up the shadow with blue now, but it's kind of too blue, or I, I mean, you could keep it like this. It would be very fresh and very kind of colorful, but I think to chill out this blue, I'm gonna come back with the complement to that, which is orange, and this is this dark neutral orange, and I'm going to add it in with the blue, not super evenly, but I'm gonna add it in with the blue to kind of take a bit of the blue out of it. And I can see automatically, or I can I can immediately see that it's kind of overpowering the blue that I put down. So I'll come back and address that. I'm going to let it kind of dance around a little bit through here. Yeah, it kind of just takes over. That's one thing I'm noticing, but that's okay. We'll let it, we'll let that happen for now. I'm gonna come back there with something besides this. That's all, it's kind of dark through there. I'm gonna switch back to my blue for a second just to cool off some of this stuff. So this is, so it was blue, then that dark neutral orange, now back to blue, which is gonna, it's gonna give me a, a shadow side that's less intensely blue, I guess. Soften that. As a nurse, not making it to work was not an option. But driving through the snow with my wiper blades struggling, I just didn't feel safe. So I pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and before I knew it, an employee was offering to install the wiper blades on my car. I got to stay out of the snow for a moment, and I still made it to work on time. This is that lavender, little, not lavender, little, just dark violet chunk. Uh, I'm going to use that for just a couple of things here. Let's see, this is. I need to think about the form right here. So, like through this area, I need to like really dissect what the shadows are up to. So, like this is a tight shadow with a soft edge that way. They're all kind of. If I look at them all all the shadows in the, the ab area they're kind of they're sharp on the left side and they kind of swipe to the right because of what the light source is doing or they kind of do this that that so i'm going to keep that in mind all right and this, I've got a sort of a miscommunication happening up here. So I've got this nipple, which seems to be 
reasonably in line with the shadows here, but if I go straight up from the nipple in the drawing, I hit that shadow shape and I hit it pretty close like that. I'm going to grab this other blue. This is again my light, light blue stick. I'm just going to re redefine that shadow. Again with the orange stick just to take some of the oomph out of it. I think I'm going to restate this as well just with the white stick being just a little more careful. At this point using the white stick lightly as long as I don't push really hard it's kind of mixing with the stuff that I've already put down and giving me kind of a skin tone rather than the, a bold white. That helps that my hands are filthy as well. Is there a certain way to hold the stick, especially for small areas? Yeah, it's like, a, it's like uh, two choices for small areas. I can tilt the stick up, and you'll sometimes see me do like a little hatch thing in small areas, especially in the higher layers when I want the, like if I want to highlight or something like that, I'll put a little more lean on the stick and kind of uh, be more aggressive with it or I'll grab a smaller stick like this is about a third of a full stick I'm sort of keeping in that in that range right now right. I'm gonna try and get this shadow real quick Right about up from this junction, there's this cast shadow, which is really quite nice. It's like the arm comes down like this and there's a cast shadow there. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna come up into the here as well and sort of flesh this out just a little bit. I can see some cool anatomy happening here. It's like Latissimus dorsi is twisting up into that arm. Terry's major, that's what this shadow is on Terry's major, is twisting up into that armpit. And then I have deltoideus sort of going up over the top and the triceps kind of, this little shape here is the triceps going in between them. So if I'm trying to keep myself anatomically in check, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about. This is gonna come down. That's going to swipe a little more. I'm going to see if I can get some of these bumps up here with this yellow stick. And this is, Tatiana, this is what you were talking about. Uh, small area, little tiny bumps up here that I'm trying to get. Little tiny yellow stick, and I'm going to see how well it, it layers on. So there's that. So it's, yeah, that's good. And then there's another one right here. And I noticed that this one has a little, it's a little bit lighter right up here towards the head, so, or towards the right side of it. Ooh. So I'm gonna grab that. Oh. All right, and right now it feels like this is a little bit too thin to me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grow that just a little bit. And then it looks like to me like through here, it looks like it cools off quite a bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as an excuse to bring some blue in. Ooh, especially on the back of this deltoid, like I feel like that could really have some blue to it. And heck, we might as well throw some in the back of these shadows as well. I'm going to reform this because I feel like it got lost. And I'm going to do something. Right now, for the first time, I'm going to bring this green in. And 
sort of just see how it acts. It feels a little bit greenish through here to me. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of that green on. And I'm still dealing with Rainbow Man. It's still quite rainbowy. Um, I'll come through potentially later. I, I could leave it like that or I could come through a little bit later and deal with it, which I think I will do. Uh, it feels a little, and I'm going to find anywhere else that feels a little bit green because I don't want it just in that one spot. I want it anywhere I can justify the use of it just to spread its effect around a little bit. There, maybe, maybe right through the back there. All right, that's enough of that. Really light swipes with that one. If you're really heavy handed, instead of a white stick, a cream stick is definitely a better choice. Uh, and I think uh, that first stick I was using, if I'm being full honest with you, I think it looked like a dirty white stick to me, but I think it's really a cream stick. Like if I rub it in my hand and then I grab this other white stick that I had, you can sort of see the difference there. This is that cream stick that I had. That's what this stuff was. And then I switched to this white stick uh, for this other stuff. It's hard to tell on the drawing, but I can tell on my hand. So if you're heavy handed, especially you know yourself, you're heavy handed with the white, lay off of it, lay off of it for quite a while, I would say. And this is where it's nice to have a variety of stick colors because it just gives you, gives you more flexibility. And you'll see that maybe in, in the next drawings that we do, I'll kind of, I'll use a wider array of pastels. All right, I'm gonna come through here because it looks to me like this. That whole area as it transitions into shadow feels violet to me. So I'm gonna overshoot. I'm gonna add a little magenta to it as well because I can see little bits of, ooh, that's a, that stick doesn't want to play ball. Let's see if this one does. Yeah, much better. All right, I kind of overshot here. So this is a lot of magenta and violet because I'm gonna bring that white back into it and I want it to mix and make skin color. In fact, I'll do that right now. So if I gently swipe, and this is a white stick kind of on its side. I'm gonna do some swipes across there. And I'm saving room here for some highlights. Like I see some highlights through this leg, so I'm going to save that room so that I can do those. All right, here's where I'm going to get this. So I've got quite a bit of orange in this shadow. Here's where I'm going to get this blue stick, and I'm going to bring some, some oomph back into this drawing, because so, it's kind of like the values are getting lost. There's a little more clarity up here and not so much down here. So I'm going to bring it back with this blue stick. And I think I'm going to do the whole thing first. Maybe come back with orange for that. All right, and then... adductor muscles are bulging out there a little bit. It looks, it's quite nice, that little transition. And again, I'm just going to let the leg kind of fall off a little bit because I'm not really focused on that so much. And then this leg it needs some more pop now that I've done that other stuff. So I'm going to come in and just strengthen the core shadow. When I say strengthen the core shadow, that just means, you know, darkening right after that transition into shadow. And it's going to give me some more dimension here. And I'm just laying the stick on its side. And in fact, I might switch. I'm going to switch to this smaller, same blue, that dark blue, smaller stick so that I can get in here without being too overbearing. And 
I have to ask myself a question right here because the knee, the shadow down here is really strong in the reference image. It's very, they're very distinct shadows. But if I make them super distinct in the drawing, they're going to sort of take over or it's going to pull attention to down here. And it's like, do I want that? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm safe in the knee, but I definitely don't want to go like as dark as possible down here. There's kind of a nice drop off happening towards the edges. Like, I don't know if you all can see up here, down here and there, the drawing just kind of fades out. That's a nice option to keep interest in the actual where you want it to be sort of in this body section is what i turned it into so let's see we got i don't know if you can hear my kids fighting in the background it's just cooped up we're all cooped up yeah that's pretty nice there's a there's a nice little line that comes through like this i want to make sure and get that quadriceps and then Feel free to ask me questions. If I start grab just grabbing sticks willy nilly and throwing them down, just uh, and you're like, "Whoa, why did you decide to do that?" Just go ahead and stop me, because um, I will kind of lapse into that. I'll be like, just I'll start grabbing sticks. Let's see, that's a nice, nice cast shadow there, hard edge. Can't get too carried away down here. I'm gonna shorthand some of this stuff. With this white stick, it's easy to get too excited. All right, that leg. The, a nice trick to do in drawings as well, even if there's not, even if it's kind of detailed back here, this leg is in back and this leg is in front. So you can sort of short change this leg, sort of just silhouette it and really pay attention to the light of this leg and that arm, like I could leave that head just like that, the whole drawing long, and it's not going to be uh, a problem, really. All right, I'm noticing the top, the top of this thigh is warmer than the rest of it, so I'm just going to... Throw that like that. All right, I'm gonna move through here, through this section of the body with my white stick and just see, is there anywhere I need to pop things up? Cause I've got some structure through here, but I think there's reason to have more. So I'm just gonna start at the hip where I feel decent. And I'm already gonna switch from white stick to yellow just to get this little fold of skin a little more clearly. Then I'll probably come in with the white just to knock that yellow back. And I lost my shadow there, so I'm going to bring it back. There's a little... So orange stick, and then blue stick. Not everywhere, just a couple of places. I don't even know if you can see it on the screen, but I see it here. It's like orange and, orange and blue in that little line. Helps it kind of stop from being too basic. Nobody wants to be basic. All right, and that looks like the dark value there to me. There's almost like an hourglass shape coming through here of coolness. There's this big triangle of, it's like a slab of muscle from latissimus dorsi and serratus anterior to get anatomical on you, hiding our hiding the ribs right there. But as soon as we get back into here, the ribs show up again. So, and that's what I'm gonna go through right now and kind of let's see, see if I can tease those ribs back out. A Little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. 
Uh, I'm going to go real light with the white right here. There's a little hit. This is where editing is important. If I tried to copy every single line that's up there, I really need to be mature about how I deal with this drawing versus reality. Um, because you can get, this can turn into chaos really quickly. What I want to do is I want to describe the ribs, edit some of the major stuff, um, just get some of the, just get the drawing descriptive and convincing and not slave over every single little change that's happening in the reference image. Uh, I just want the, the broad strokes. Like I know there's an arc of light that comes like this. There's another one that starts above that. Then they kind of get a little more mellow. They're kind of, they're little waves right here. And that's already a little bit stronger than I want to go right there. So I'll come knock that back in a little bit. Uh, I am going to, I'm going to swipe this just a little bit lighter through here. And that's picking up that green that I had down before, which is nice. All right, now where I'm gonna sort of look at my main shadows here. I have this shadow, which I was paying attention to earlier. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this real quick. There's a shadow in the ab section that has a little triangle that juts out like that. Here's where I have my stick tilted up a little stronger. It's white, but it's still picking up the what was below. So this is going to be my guide because I have another strong light right there. Then it's kind of a gentler, gentler light like that. All right, then I've got some white through that chest shape. And this is screaming light. I'm going to get that in a little while. Same, I'm going to come back through and do the highlight here through that leg right there. I'm going to hit those really light lights later once I feel like the rest of the stuff is, or the rest of the body is, is working together reasonably. Uh, heck, I'm going to come in and finish out these abs. So this to there to there. Grab my blue stick. There's some shadow information I could get in here. region's kind of darker just a little bit. All right, this violet's a little, oh, that's not too bad. My count is off. I've got one, two, three. Oh, that should be thinner. Boom. So we've got, almost made a shadow shape with the light stick. So I was very tempted to smear with my finger. Ooh, not going to do that. If I need to smear, if I feel like I need to smear, I'm going to use another stick to do it. So I'm just going to brute force some decision making in here. I've got one, two, three. That squares with what I see, so I'm going to let it do that. Coming back with the orange stick just a little bit. By orange stick, that's that dark neutral orange that I was using. Let's see, is that my dark blue? I don't want that. All right, I'm gonna come in with white, and drop it on my pad real quick. This white's gonna take me too far, but I'm gonna come back and tone it down. I lost some shadows through here, or I didn't have them in the first place, so I'm going to put those in. Like at the top of, there's one at the top of that little mark. This one points up to another one right there. And I'm doing that same, so this process, I'm doing that same thing we did in the shadow shape gestures. I'm looking at the shape that I see and asking myself, can I make that shape with the stick that I've got? 
this felt almost like a V or like a little hook. So I kind of like, I put it in as a little V shape. All right, and then I've got a couple of thin marks here. I'm gonna start with the yellow because that's sort of the closest thing to what, to how they look to me. They look kind of like yellow shapes back there. But then to get these to sort of rhyme with these ones up here, I'm going to add some, add some white. <laughs> Just to get them to play ball a little bit more. Defining these shadows a little more clearly. Very much too blue, so I'm going to come back with some orange. And now I've tilted this up, and I'm kind of hatching just a little bit with it. Let me know if the captions are working or if they're just kind of, I don't know if they've stalled out or if they're, I'm looking at the preview and it's hard for me to tell. Captions are definitely not working. Let me see what the option, what the deal is, real quick. Uh, let me know they stopped working oh soon after i started them up that is like stop it that's my phone y'all sorry about that all right i don't know if the captions are worth doing in the live stream i think that youtube captions them after the fact anyway so i might just ditch the captions for future ones they've stopped again oh man What's going on? <laughs> I know I'm like, it's Pavlovian training. I'm training you only to be able to draw when there's this music going on. Unbelievable. All right, well, let me know if the captions are having problems. And if so, I mean, I, maybe I'll just shut them off. Is anybody reading the captions or are they a problem? This is my drawing music slash I listen to weirder stuff at home, but I don't want to subject you to that because because it's rough. Yeah, I'm, I have to keep, I have to comply with ADA the best I can. Um, but it is taxing my computer to do those. Let me, I'm just gonna shut them off. Poor computer, just can't hack it. All right, so right now everything's kind of disparate or 
it's really, I, I have to decide, do, my, do I like where things are at here? Um, or do I need to tone down like how much color there is? And I'm like, if I wanted to tone down how colorful things are, like I need to desaturate and I need to bring the values closer together, uh, I can do that just with my white stick. So if I wanted to, I could kind of just come through and like using my white stick kind of bring bring things closer together. Maybe particularly up in here, soften the edge here. I'm not going to do it again, not going to do it willy nilly. I'm just going to sort of see those still those jump out as really strong to me. So I'm going to chill them out and I think I'm going to use the blue stick. This is my light blue stick. I think I'm going to use the blue stick to do it. This is just feather light swiping and you can see it knocked those light shapes back a little bit. Right, and I see some I see some reflected light back in here. I think I'm gonna put that in with this blue stick. I'm just gonna see how this blue stick acts. Uh, I think that'll work. So I'm kind of going overboard here with the blue. That's okay. I want this to stay different to what's out in the light. All right, that was my light blue. I'm going to come back with my dark blue and reclaim some of the detail because I just lost some doing that. Man, something about those captions. My computer is really happy that I stopped doing them. It was the fans were going. It was really trying its best. And now it doesn't seem to be as, as bad. So if I feel like this is going too blue as well, I can come back with... Uh, come back with that orange and sort of chill it out. Uh, do we need to get the colors as close as possible to the image or can it be different than the image? Maybe more colorful or less? Yeah, so you see mine is is much more colorful than the reference image. Um, what I want to see is color balance in a way that's convincing about what the figure looks like. So I know that's kind of nebulous talk, but I would consider this drawing to be that it's a it's a it's an attempt to balance colors in a descriptive and naturalistic way that makes use of that sort of it kind of matches what's happening in the image as to as opposed to going way out in left field with it you know so you can get as close to the image as you want the danger there is that you just do a brown drawing you know it's just it's all brown. Um, the danger with going f with a lot of color is that you do a drawing that's really uh, looks like a rainbow trout. You so this same image, yes. So this is what's in the in the canvas assignment. This is the one that you can use, or I will allow you guys since we did this in class already. If you have a class drawing. That's, that worked better or that you felt like really came together well, you're, you're also welcome to use that. I'm using this light green again to sort of get up in these shadows. This reflected light up in here, it just feels kind of light green to me, I guess. I'm going to come back and darken those shadows too. I don't want to just do it there though, so I'm going to swipe it in a few places back here. Maybe like this, like 
that and like this and uh and back here too this playlist it's like uh, it's Pandora, it plays the same stuff so much. I'm softening this edge right here because I feel like it was too hard. All right, I'm going to darken some of this. This is a very dark shadow, so I'm going to... In fact, I'm going to do that whole shadow shape. Just, I'm going to kind of go overboard here. And I'm going to go in with this orange. I think, yeah, I don't want to, I'm not going to do so orange. I'm going to use the green and get this reflected light right. Right there. Oh, and that's quite green. I think I am going to come in with this orange. I'm not worried about that. That little overshot. I can just go whoop and it goes away. So that's my white stick just whoops, just doing a slight adjustment with my white stick. All right, I am going to structure this head out just a little bit more. I'm going to I think I'm going to keep it silhouette though because I don't want I don't want this to be the focus really. See shadow drop down to the face. I'm going to use this opportunity to get some shape to that arm. And I don't want it to be all blue, so I'm going to come in with just a little bit in the face just to warm things up. I'm going to overshoot too. Here the hair kind of shows up as like this textured little area. And I'm just going to super light swipes with the white, super light swipes with the orange. You'll notice I haven't used black one single time this whole drawing. I'm not, I may not. I may not at all. Oh, that's what I did, isn't it? I thumbsed up some of these because I liked them. And then it's like, oh, you like those? You'll like to drown in them then. Enjoy. And then it waterboards you with the same songs. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, the, I've got a question for myself, which is what what about the background? What am I going to do there? Bring some of these shadows back again. And that's not to say I won't use black. I'm just to retrace my steps a little bit. It's not to say I won't use black. I might if I feel like the, uh, the situation calls for it, like I need more contrast. But I'm definitely not defaulting to black because it is the great color killer so i'll just use my dark blue and that orange mix thank you very much and keep things more alive i think i'm going to come back through real quick and get like there's this strong blue light i see on the leg um oh yeah you want the <laughs> i wonder if i can share my station my pandora station that's a good question. I'll look into that and see. Um, anyway, I see the blue here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna find other things that are kind of oriented the same direction. And even if I don't see it in the image, I'm just gonna tap. And I've got some actually in the arm already. I'm just gonna tap tap some blue here and there.
just to kind of, I don't know, tie that feeling of cool light into the image. Like maybe there's, maybe there's some in here, up in that shadow. That's kind of nice where the orange and blue are kind of playing together in there. I like that. This is far too light in value. I'm just going to swipe it back with some blue. And I think that core shadow is going to get a little blue. All right, I've got a little bit of work to do in here. Let's see, right there. Hmm, I need some darker info. I think I'm going to come with the violet and just get this structure in. That's a good candidate for the blue. All right, my question for myself was, how about the background? Um, I need to decide what to do with this background because there's, there's quite a few colors in the figure. And I could say, hey, I'm going to sort of use the background to balance the figure out. Um, if I just take broad strokes of the figure right now, oh, I could just leave it gray. I do want to carve some more some silhouette into this. So I think I might go with the, this. Mm, I'm just going to see what the green looks like. I don't want to go with this light blue all by itself because I've got this, this back here kind of, I don't know, that light blue feels like it would get lost into the background. And I've got it elsewhere in there as well. I'm just going to see what the green does. I, mainly, I just want something that this can stand out against. I'm a little concerned about the green because it's so warm. I might mix it with the blue just to see how things go. But I'm going to, I'm just going to catch this silhouette real quick. I need, I need that bump right there. I don't need to put it everywhere. I can just, you know, use it to carve out the silhouette. And it doesn't it doesn't matter to me that these are kind of mixing together. In fact, I I want them to. So a little bit of that blue coming out into the green it will help provide a little bridge. I can just shape the leg with that. And then I'm just gonna let it drop off because I don't really need a strong silhouette too much back there. Just follow that S curve of the leg. I'm gonna leave that little magenta hit just, to, just as a counterbalance against all of this green. And, this is just pass one as well of the background. And you see it's nothing like the, the image. The image is a lot of blue and gray and stuff. This is just a decision to sort of rhyme with what's going on in the figure. It's not about, uh, it's not about a dead match. Let's see. There's some anatomy ha happening up here in the shoulder and I want to make sure not to miss it. So I got I need to make sure and get this bump up, down. I might have overstated it earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and bump. I'm going to carve a little bit of it off, but I will need to come back and restate that shadow. There I'm just being quite quite gentle with the stick, just little scrubs in there. Right. 
back to this. I'm going to start this one with kind of a line just to establish the silhouette. Now I've got the stick on its side, wrap up into that. I'm not going to fixate on this face too much. I do want, one thing I do want is the nose. I'm just going to shelf that off a little bit. And this is just a square swipe, right? Just to give me that shelf. All right, I'm looking at the timer. I've got about 15 more minutes to go on this. So I'm gonna ask myself, what else do I need to do? Uh, I could come in, there's this darker green. If I felt like this green was too hot, and I'm like, woof, that's really a, a brutal green. Um, I could come back in with this darker green and just kind of chill things out a little bit. If I was like, man, that green is extra green, I could come in with magenta and kind of take some of the oomph out, like neutralize the green. Or I could come in with some blue and just like, you know, turn it into more of a kind of a blue green, a gentler background. Uh, I kind of like the warm, the warmth of this green. So I'm just going to leave it light green stick. You can see that took on a little bit more depth and interest. So one pass of background, I mean, it's doable. It's not bad, but like if I fill it up with some other stuff, just a couple of light swipes and then bring that initial color back. What I'll get is green pants because that's what's happening. Uh, what I'll get is a, a more nuanced background. All right, in 15 minutes, I'm gonna go for contrast, these areas of contrast. So what do I want to pop? I feel like this back here is strong, this over here is strong. It gets a little washy, especially like right through here, it's a little bit wish-washy. I'm just gonna, and this is where I'm gonna start just using little hatch marks and stuff. This is my dark blue. It's like a dark cast shadow from that nipple and a kind of a light hit. So I just will throw that in there. I'm still not super pleased with this. It feels kind of like smooshy, like non, not very structural through here. This feels pretty structural to me. Up here feels pretty structural to me. Through here, not so much. So I think I'm gonna use, it's also the lightest place. So I'm gonna use my white stick now 
and come in and get some of that structure, starting with this shelf. And I'm gonna hatch here because I feel like the white stick isn't laying down as strong as it should with all that other stuff there, which actually isn't a bad thing. So if I need something gentle, I already know with my white stick, if I need something gentle, I can swipe it. If I need something aggressive, I can hatch with it. So that's gonna kind of be my operating procedure. So through here, oh, that's nice. Right there. And right through here. These are swipes. Right along that tricep. I might just do a little hatch there. The little hatching kind of makes, just reminds you that it's a drawing. Let's reshape this. Uh, let's do some core shadow bump just there. I'm not going to carry it on for too long. Let's do, let's just knock that back a little bit. Right, back here, I'm going to leave that stuff. There's a little bit here. I like that little moment of hard edge right there. Uh, this feels like it should darken just a little bit. And go backwards like that. A little light here. I'm in danger of going into the zone and then not talking to you guys anymore. <laughs> starting to draw. I'm still being really observant. I can't afford to go just... Ah, blah, blah, blah. I've done... There's been enough work so far that I, I can't really... Uh, I can't really afford to go bonkers. I need I need to make sure my decisions are sensible, though they are being a little bit more. The marks are being a little bit more aggressive. Um, I'm basing them on uh, light shapes. So if I see a kind of a long oval light shape here, I'm kind of thinking of that TFL muscle that runs right there and I'm kind of going across the muscle with it. Or like the light shape is kind of long this way, so I'm kind of zigzagging across it. There's a long, thin light here, so I'm kind of zigzagging my way down it. I'm not going lengthwise like this because that'll start looking plasticky. It gets a little bit, a little bit too perfect, or a little bit too lined up. It's better to kind of disrupt, especially with skin, it's better to disrupt the reed rather than going lengthwise. Like I already am starting that in here. It's shadow, so it's not that huge of a deal, but um, it can be nice to have, you know, some marks that traverse that expected flow, so to speak. All right, I'm going to rack this and step back just for last call on what what uh, what needs work, what needs help. Let's see.
right, I'm going to come in and firm up just a couple of things through here, like this. Hard edge, I'm working on a hard edge right here, and I'm going to soften it this way. Same here. Hard edge, I'm going to soften it that way. Then I'm going to I'm going to bring some contrast back into this area. I'm doing this with my dark blue. I need to practice my Bob Ross presentation skills. That's a nice little, nice little sternum there. Oh, that sternum needs a buddy. Y'all, I'm on quarantine. Forgive me. I start acting weird. All right. Now that feels a little too woo, a little too blue for me. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to chill it out with some of this orange. Now I'm not trying to blast the orange or the blue completely away with the orange. I'm just kind of mixing them in together here just to, I don't know, get them on a similar page with each other. Maybe some orange up in there too. Where else needs some? I think I'm going to define these just a little bit more. Yeah, that's nice. light right there. Ooh, and you know what? I'm gonna soften this edge up here. So I'm gonna overshoot and I'm gonna bring it back. There's just new trees on the canvas. This is not on newsprint. This is on that gray paper. So I went out and bought myself a pad of that gray paper, the same one that y'all are working on. Um, so that's what I, that's what this is going on. Uh, and I kind of like the. I'm just gonna bring some magenta back in, just to I don't know. I looked over here and I saw kind of this magenta halo and I kind of liked it. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna find a few places to to keep that. Especially back here, it seems kind of dead. Yeah, I think I'm going to call that. We're about three minutes from the end. Uh, I'm going to call that a finished. The newsprint gods are angered. Were you testing me right there? Because uh, you don't want to do your best drawing on newsprint. 
If you can do the drawing so uh, such that I can't tell you did it on newsprint, then how will I ever know? All right. All right, now I need to make sure and put my new pastels back in a sensible order. I'm the worst at that when I put them back in the container. I just put them in willy-nilly, and then it's hard for me to... sort through them later. It's chaos in there. All right, so thanks, Alexis. Um, if you would do me a favor and just hop at 11.30, two minutes from now, I'm going to start a Zoom session. Uh, let, me, let me grab the link for that. And you can, we can sort of discuss like how that went, if that seems like a workable situation and so on. Um, All right, can you hear me now? Oh, my goodness. I switched scenes and I think it changed the input of what my microphone was up to. Oh, all right. I learned something. I learned something about the stream. Um, I was talking to myself indeed. Let me paste the Zoom meeting. And this is the open Zoom session, so it's all your it's always going to be this number. Hopefully we don't get any trolls. So um, yeah, so I'm going to start up a Zoom session.